G'day! Welcome to another Curriculum Burst. Here's a philosophically thorny question from the Grade 10 exam. It goes as follows. Each face of a cube is painted either red or blue, each with probability one half. The colour of each face is determined independently. That feels like a little technical piece of information there. Uh, what is the probability that the painted cube can be placed on a horizontal surface so that the four vertical faces are all the same colour? Oh, I've got to make sense of this. Uh, so I've got a cube that's being painted with either red or blue on each face, each with probably a half, and that I guess the independently stuff means that whatever I do to one face, it's not going to affect what I do to the next face. So we're going to place this cube. Let me just draw a cube. Do, 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 do. Let me just draw some background information. This cube gets placed on the ground, and I'm asking, what is the probability that all four vertical faces, so the four vertical faces, what are they? Like this front face going upwards, side face, back face, other side face, that these all turn out to be the same colour. All right. Uh, well, I'm just going to engage in successful flailing. I'm going to do something and see what happens. And here's my first thing I'm going to do. The front face can either be red or blue. It's going to be some colour. Let's just, I don't know, for the sake of it, say it's red. Now, what's the probability that the side face is also going to be the same colour? Well, each has a chance, half a chance of being chosen, so the probability that this is the same colour is actually also is going to be one half. Probably the back face is also the same as the front face, be it red or blue. I've just chosen red. Probably that's also the same, is also going to be a half. And ditto for the side face. Probably this is the same colour, is also a half. So the probability that they're all the same is actually going to be the chance of this occurring, and this occurring, and this occurring, a half times a half times a half, which is one eighth. Now, you're probably like wondering what I'm doing right now, because this, this feels suspiciously too easy. And I'm not quite sure I've actually answered the question. Because this cube is starting by being, what, somewhere in the air and then being placed on the ground? What I've kind of assumed here is the cube is already on the ground. So I'm a little worried about my answer. Maybe it's not one eighth. In fact, if this cube was held up in the air first and then placed on the ground, and let me just draw a cube, it's true. When I'm holding up in the air, I could paint the front face, the side face, the back face, sort of like this ring of faces like here, all the same color. But I could also paint a ring of faces this way and then turn the cube over and bring it on the ground. Or there's probably a third way. How's it going to be? Uh, it's going to be sort of this ring of faces. I could paint those all the same color and then turn the cube and put it on the ground. So I've now got this problem. I've got a color faces of a cube, and I started by assuming that the, the cube is fixed in, in place, like on the ground, or up in the air to be later moved. And that's my philosophical woe. I don't know which situation I really should be thinking about. And just to make my woe a little more clear, I'm going to go on a sidetrack right now, I'm not even like worry about the question. I'm going to ask a sort of more general question. How do I count the colorings of a cube if they're fixed in place or if they're up in the air? That might help me understand which situation I should be thinking about for this problem. So for example, if I asked, how many ways can I paint the faces all red? And now there's two situations I'm stuck on. If it's fixed on the ground, or it's right fixed for the ground, or can be moved up in the air. Well, if the cube is fixed on the ground, there's only one way to paint them all red. If it's up in the air, there's only one way to paint them all red. And ditto, all blue. There's only one way to, way to paint all six faces blue, where the, the cube is on the ground or up in the air. Not very enlightening right now. But look at the question I said, I want one red face and five blue faces. If that cube is fixed on the ground, there's any one of six faces that could be red, and the rest, the rest being blue. So there's actually then six ways I could do that colouring scheme. But if the cube is up in the air, it doesn't actually matter which of those faces I paint as red, because I can move it about. So actually there's really only one colouring scheme that's one red and five blues. And there is the crux of my philosophical difficulty with this problem. What am I counting? Is it six or one? So then I get worried. And what I need to do now is basically put my feet up on the table, stare at the ceiling and really mull on this. This is hard work. This is hard thinking work. Which situation I'm in and what do I do? And I always find probability questions like these really thorny and very hard. And often a good way out of this is the following. So right now I keep drawing cubes with all the faces blank. So it's possible that maybe this question doesn't need the faces to be blank. For example, there's a very standard cube in our lives, it's called a die, which has little pictures on the sides of the face, one dot, two dots, three dots, four dots, five dots, six dots, so there the faces are indistinguishable. Are distinguishable. Now comes the question, would this question that I'm asking care 
if I didn't deal with a blank cube, but I dealt with an actual die with the faces labelled. Paint the faces, plonk it on the ground, what's probably all four faces, vertical faces are red. I don't think this question cares if it's an actual die where I can tell the faces apart. So maybe working with a die like this is a good way to think about the problem. Because then, look what happens to our philosophical woe. How many ways can I paint one face red and the five blue on an actual labelled die like this? Well, if it's fixed on the ground, still six ways. But if it's fixed in the air, there's now six ways. It'll either be the three-numbered the three -numbered face that's red, or maybe it's the two-numbered face that's red, or the six-numbered face that's red. Even if this, this die is up in the air, there's now six ways to paint it, this particular colouring scheme. And since this question doesn't seem to care whether I'm dealing with a labelled die or a blank cube, maybe I can see now working with a labelled die is the way to go. Because it looks like I've now sorted out my philosophical difficulty. I might have a chance now of actually counting the types of colouring schemes I want so that this actual die can be plonked on the ground with four vertical faces of the same colour. In fact, I can tell you how many colourings there are at all. The one face could be one of two colours, the two face one of two colours, three face one of two colours, all the way up to six face one of two colours. There are actually two to the six, 64 different colourings of this die. So all I have to do now is count how many colourings I want and divide that by 64 and it looks like this problem might fall into place. Still a bit of work there. I haven't done the work yet, but I'm going to leave that up to you. So give it a try, and then have a look at the essay that goes with this, this particular video, and, and compare your work with mine, and see, see how we shape up there. All right, thanks so much. Thanks for watching. For more Curriculum Inspirations material, go to our website. Lots of great stuff there.